Hello, Breakfast Club, Sister Danger here. My festival is officially done for the year and I am back and going to make a response video to Brock Wally's last video titled, Democrats are morally wrong, speaking mostly to the immigration issue. I'd like to start out today's video by saying that I am an advocate of countries having borders. I do not advocate for the complete dissolution of borders everywhere, and I never have. I also agree that the media is completely rife with hyperbole and that it is hindering any actual understanding or conversation on this topic. The pure spin that is placed by both parties is confusing to the general public and just generally disgraceful. I'm going to try to first bring some clarity to a lot of the terms and misperceptions that are floating around as best I can, and then I'm going to address some of Brock's commentary, and then I'm going to just ignore the stuff at the end of his video because it's really just a bunch of rhetoric that doesn't speak to the issue, uh, no matter how emphatic Brock may be. Or to quote my all-time favorite movie, you are passionate, Brock, but you do not persuade. I will be including links to the things that I'm referencing in the low bar for anybody that wants to read further themselves or to even go and fact check the things that I am saying. The first thing that I want to disentangle are some of the terms that are freely thrown around by the media. So bear with me a little bit as I delve into the nuances of some of these, it does make a difference in how we discuss the topic. I'm going to begin with first from the Department of Homeland Security website. A refugee is a person outside his or her country of nationality who is unable or unwilling to return to his or her country of nationality because of persecution or a well-founded fear of persecution on account of race, religion, nationality, membership in a particular social group or political opinion. An asylee is a person who meets the definition of refugee and is already present in the United States or is seeking admission at a port of entry. That is very important, port of entry. Refugees are required to apply for lawful permanent resident, which is a green card, and not to be confused with citizenship, status one year after being admitted and asylees may apply for green card status one year after their grant of asylum. I want to add in here that people requesting asylum do get investigated. Those claims have to be verified, so that's why the date is one year from their grant of asylum, because first that needs to be ascertained for its truthfulness, and then once it is, usually by going to having a court date set and then going to court. And then once it is, uh, I believe a statistic that I read someplace was something like roughly 75% of families or people seeking asylum do actually get granted that uh, through due process. And then from there, you have uh, one year we, until you can apply for your green card. An illegal alien or immigrant, illegal immigrant, an illegal alien or illegal immigrant is a foreign national who is living without authorization in a country of which they are not a citizen. So having defined these terms, I want to briefly cover claims on the topic of what sort of benefits illegal aliens actually can gain from, because there's all kinds of rhetoric out there about how they're cheating the system and taking all of this stuff and, and welfare, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my source here is an immigration lawyer by the name of Eric Pavri, and he is the director of family immigration services at Catholic Charities of Central Colorado. Uh, you can verify this by entering his bar number, and I will go ahead and put that again in the low bar. And I'm just going to read to you directly what he's written himself on this topic for the purposes of increasing public awareness with facts. He actually has written much more than I'm going to read to you guys here. And so I will put a link to this also in the low bar so that if you want to read the whole thing, it's rather 
informative, uh, you can go and do so yourself. Quote, finally, as to the question of immigrants receiving public benefits, only a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent resident, that is, green card holder, can receive almost all types of public benefit, including Medicaid, Medicare, SSI disability, Social Security payments for seniors, TAMF, and food stamps. The following are the public benefits that undocumented immigrants can receive in the United States. 1. Public education for children in grades K-12. through 12. This was definitively established by a 1982 Supreme Court case, Pyler v. Doe. The Supreme Court, in its reasoning, explicitly stated that it would not serve the overall public good of the U.S. to leave many thousands of children uneducated. 2. Emergency room services, but only to the point where the patient is considered medically stable, at which point he or she is released. These services are not free, however, and it is Eric's job to meet hundreds of immigrant families who sacrifice over years to slowly pay off high emergency room medical bills. Three, WIC assistance. This is for milk, food, etc., and available only to pregnant mothers. The rationale is that the children in the womb will be U.S. citizens when born, and therefore it is in the long-term economic best interest of the nation to ensure that they receive adequate prenatal nutrition to improve their chances of being a productive citizen in the decades to come. 4. Assistance from police if they are the victim of a crime and call for help. 5. Assistance from a fire department. Rationale besides the obvious moral one, if your house was next to that of an undocumented immigrant family, would you want the firefighters to let the house continue to burn, putting yours at risk of catching fire too? And that's it. Those, to the best of my knowledge, are the only public benefits that an undocumented immigrant worker can receive in just about any part of the United States. I want to also add in one other interesting point, I'm a little snip here. So again, if you want to read this whole thing, the link will be in the low bar. But um, he does make a point of mentioning that children of undocumented parents born in the United States are U.S. citizens under the 14th Amendment the one that declares that all human beings born on U.S. soil are citizens. This was passed immediately after the Civil War to forever end the legal argument that African Americans were not U.S. citizens. As such, those children can qualify for the same public benefits as any other U.S. citizen if they qualify through economic need or disability, but their parents or undocumented siblings cannot. And now we get to the fun part of addressing some of the things that Brock has been ranting about. Right away in his video, long about one minute and 57 seconds, give or take a few, uh, he makes the statement that this activity has pretty much been going on forever and that the Democratic Party doesn't care about children. So while I pretty much agree that politicians in general on the left and the right don't care much about children or really the public at large, this current situation has not been going on forever, and that is definitely a, an inaccurate statement. The laws have been in place for a very long time, but what is different to the Trump administration is that the enforcement of the laws is unique to Trump. Previously, when illegals were caught crossing the border, they would be released into the United States, usually with some manner of a tracking device attached to them, often an ankle bracelet, and they would be given a court date that uh, their case would then be heard, uh, you know, for instance, they were seeking asylum or whatever, and that court date was aimed to be within, you know, roughly six months or so, sometimes a little bit longer, give or take, but you know, if they, if they weren't found to be legit, then they would be deported. And I want to pause here to make a small clarification. First time crossers uh, over the border are charged now with a misdemeanor. And in the past, they were generally put through civil deportation proceedings and shipped back out. Those who have already been deported once are now charged with a felony crossing and uh, this of course has steeper penalties that go along with it 
but I wanted to mention it so that folks are aware that there are, in fact, different levels of crossing offenses, and not every one of them is a misdemeanor. So I did a little bit of digging on my own on this to find out what happens after somebody is criminally charged, and here's what I found from the New York Times, and the link will be in the low bar. If convicted, they, the illegal alien, would be imprisoned for the duration of their sentences, after which time they could be returned to their countries of origin. First-time illegal entry is a misdemeanor that carries up to a six-month prison sentence. Repeat entry constitutes a felony and carries a penalty of up to two years imprisonment. So while the parent or parents are imprisoned and serving their sentence, then the children are supposed to be put into some kind of a temporary home situation and results in the meantime in them being held in these sort of detention camps. So Brock goes on at around three minutes to talk, you know, rant a little bit about how um, when Barack Obama was the president that nobody cared that he had 50,000 children detained, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This actually isn't true. I'm going to go ahead and put at least one link in the low bar to a formal objection to some of the things going on under the Obama administration. But a quick Google search will pull up plenty of very critical articles and about this topic discussing what was going on during that time. Taco break, taco break. How long till part two must we wait?